What is Cafe Mocha? Experts, celebrities. Hey, this is John Legend. Yours truly is Yourselva. This is Fantasia. I am Ian LeVance. Hey, everybody, it's your girl Tamar Braxton. Music and features from a woman's perspective. Intriguing conversation. The Swag Award. Espresso. The MC Light Mix. Radio from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Cafe Mocha. Happy July 4th weekend. This is Cafe Mocha. How'd she go from being a secretary to launching Sister to Sister magazine? Jamie Foster Brown is up next. It's Cafe Mocha. We are at the Salute Her Award Ceremony with this cutie pie, Jamie Foster Brown. How are you? Hi, child. Oh, I'm speaking to you, not to Charles. Sorry. Okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm so silly. It's okay. I'm a huge, I am a huge fan. I'm a true fan. That, that was so nice to hear that. I appreciate that. So, how do you go from just this little idea in your head to a national magazine, a national platform? Well, I had no intentions. Only thing I ever wanted to be was a secretary. But um, my sister and I, my father had taught my sister and I that back in the day, he said, if you ever want to get in any place, as you should have shorthand and typing at that time. I always have a skill. You have to have a gift that you have that, you, that people are willing to pay you for. I talk to children about that all the time. What's your gift? If you want to go work somewhere, what's the gift that you're going to give those? people that they would want to have you there with them. And so my father said, if you have shorthanded typing, you can get in any door and then you can figure it out from once you're inside. But all we ever wanted to be were secretaries. I just happened to work for Bob Johnson because I had the gift of shorthand and typing. And when he first started BET, it was very difficult for him to find people who were skilled and, and without errors, who knew the English language. I was an English major. Um, you knew how to answer the phone. I mean, I was trained very highly by the uh, secretary of the Sears of Sears and Roebuck was one of my teachers in school. And also I trained under AT&T where you could not make any mistakes as a secretary when you work for them. So anyway, and then I went to school in Europe and I was well, well educated. I was there nine years. And so when I came back, I started working for Bob Johnson. I had to do everything from contracts. I had to write the pilot for Video Soul. Being a good um, employee, Bob asked me as he started to expand, what do you want to be? You want to be over here in corporate? You want to go to production? I told him I want to be in production. And then that's how I met all the uh, celebrities and their executives that would bring the celebrities in. And then after four and a half years, I left there and started the little newsletter. I realized how important celebrities were, how we we were drawn to them. But having been over in Europe, I also missed my race. I missed being with my people. But I also recognized how how wonderful and magical we are as a race. We survive. We really do. And um, I wanted the celebrities to teach my people things that happen in their life, how to get through uh, trials and tribulations. So that I started, that's, I, I really was trying to teach. I said, I have this privilege of being with these kinds of people, with celebrities. I want to take advantage of that and see if I can use them to teach the masses. So that's how I just kind of started. More with the creator of Sister to Sister magazine on the way. It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha talking to Jamie Foster Brown of Sister to Sister Magazine. And speaking of celebrities and this empire you've built, will you talk about how gossip and entertainment news and the paparazzi have kind of taken over? How do you feel about that part of the business now? Well, the the paparazzi, well, people are mean. And I, basically, I feel that now there's a tremendous access. Everyone has access now, so everyone has power. But we're human beings. When God put chickens and horses and cows on earth, they don't need books to teach them how to act and what to do and how to, how to get along with other people. Humans would tear up the world if they don't have good book learning, good instruction, and, and have some, you know, parameters. Like, you don't say this, you don't do this, and this sort of thing. That has with the onset of uh, with, with that you know the access that every individual has now is um, we lean towards being mean and 
that's not a good thing. It just is not. It doesn't uh, uh, lend itself to being a healthy nation or a healthy community or healthy for our children. So I'm very concerned about that. One of the things that I always admired about you is that you could write the salacious piece in Sister to Sister, but you still managed proper relationships with celebrities. And that seems like it's gone now. It seems like nowadays you're on one side of the fence or the other. You can't do that, though, because celebrities still have a lot of power in what they do, but celebrities need to be taught also. So what, the, the trust factor is very important. They have to feel that they can trust me when they... Um, I, I really care about my people. I care about them too so I think that comes across to them when I'm talking to them because I mean through the years I've had to have celebrities that so called they look like they have money but they don't have money I've had to pay for hospital bills I've had to pay for their parents uh, their mortgages things like that that where they would call me up and they needed assistance they needed help because they either squandered their money or really didn't get any money for all the work that they had put in you know that Tony Braxton had done all that work could only have something what did she have uh, like a she didn't even have a million dollars it was hardly anything so there was a there have always been through the uh, the years strife and, and when, when you are a celebrity you are very vulnerable and they're the people that are are so sensitive I have to be able to talk about everything at all the times. So and sometimes the artists don't understand that, though. More with Jamie Foster Brown of Sister to Sister Magazine coming up on Cafe Mocha. Everybody get up. We all know and love her Sister to Sister magazine. Cafe Mocha honored Jamie Foster Brown at our Salute Her Awards. One of the things I want to go back to, as you said, everyone has a gift. And I feel like so many, not just women, but people of color in general, we feel like, oh... Maybe we don't have a gift. Maybe we're just going to do what our parents did, what our mom did, what our daddy did. How do you find the gift, especially in an environment that's not necessarily fostering you finding that gift? Well, I, I think that, first of all, my gift is uh, Jesus Christ and our Lord. That's the first gift that we're given. And so I tr I trust them. I, I follow the path that they kind of open up. He kind of opens up for me. And then I, I, uh, I didn't know what my gift was. I, I didn't know I, I was a writer. My sister didn't know she was a writer. But great education and the gift of shorthand and typing. Today I it would be IT. Or, you know, computers or something like that. But you still have to know how to talk to people, how to love on them, how to treat them. You know, that that's very important. We always had kind words to say to people. We always, in, in no matter who it was, it could be the janitor or whatever, we always kind, I always, you know, make people feel good about themselves. That's very, very important. And my race has gone through hell for 400 years, unbridled savagery. And so they have to understand that it's not easy for us. We're just coming up out of there. And just in a short 50 years, we now have multiple millionaires and billionaires. That's incredible. That's right. So we're an amazing race. On the way, it's the Mommy Diaries with Nicole Ari Parker. Any question you want to answer, just hit her on Twitter at Nicole R.E.P. It's Cafe Mocha. It's Cafe Mocha. Time for the Mommy Diaries with our mom. Well, not mine. Nicole Ari <laughs> Parker. Here's the letter this week. Dear Nicole. Hi. Hi. I don't mean to get personal, but when do you and Boris find time to have sex? Oh, my God. I've got a 10 and a 7-year-old at home, and though they are a blessing, me and their daddy have no time to get it in. And when we do, he's tired, or I am. We used to be that couple that would do it any time, any place. I'm worried we're going to wind up sexless and, you know, cheating. So, please help. Oh, dear. No, 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 no. See, listen. You're, first of all, you're not alone. This happens to every married couple with children. Not when you're married, it's married with children. The sex goes out the window. So what I would suggest is to remember that old saying that sex is not just you know whating. Sex is constant affection, random kisses, 
scrambling the eggs and coming up behind someone, notes on the car seat, uh, sexy text messages, um, helping them get dressed, joining them in the shower. These are all daily affectionate sexual gestures that feed the intimacy of your relationship so you stay connected and you stay aroused by each other and you will definitely find a way to the laundry room real quick (laughs) after a week of daily commitment to affection. I mean, sometimes my husband texts me or calls me like he did when he was my boyfriend and say, what you doing? You know, not asking me if I remember to sign the document for the PTA thing or who's picking up Nicholas from soccer. He just wants to know what I'm doing. And of course, that sends chills up my spine and I can't wait to go home and give him a foot massage while he's watching ESPN and he doesn't have to talk or anything, you know, so I give him these treats. He gives me treats. I I find little things under my pillow. These are the kind of things that create intimacy and keeps the heat. So when it is time to do you know what, it's really valued. You know we're all picturing you and Boris in the shower now. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Mommy Diaries with Nicole Ari Parker. I always say baby oil is the best lingerie. (laughs) Oh, I like that. (laughs) How do people reach you, Nicole? I'm always on Twitter at at Nicole Ari P. I'm sitting here with Demetria Lucas at the Salute Her award ceremony. What do you think of this guy, the felon whose picture is all over the place and people, I mean, his mom is taking up money for his, uh, for his whatever. You know, so here's the thing. I think he is an extraordinarily attractive man and I think the women are responding to, people seem very amazed that women find men attractive. Like, yes, it's not about his brains. It's not about the brawn we like, but we're not interested in marrying him. He's just an attractive man that scrolled across our screen and we thought, damn. That's as simple as it is. But his mom raising money, I don't really know who's going to contribute to his commissary or to that account, but I'm not really mad at mom trying to take advantage of baby boy spotlight. Like He's on CNN, the Today Show, everyone's talking about him, so I'm not mad at mom for picking up an entrepreneurial spirit there, but yeah. Well, but the thing is, if it was a chick, nobody and guys were going crazy, nobody would think anything of it, would they? Well, see, it's always a chick. I mean, there's there are women on Instagram that have like a million followers because they have big booties, you know, and God bless them. But no one has these deep commentaries about why men follow women with big butt because they like it. And that's the same reason we're looking at pictures of prison bag. Like, <laughs> so what's next? What's going on right now with you? You know, I'm I'm finishing my second book, Don't Waste Your Pretty, the go-to guide for making smarter decisions in life and love. That'll be out this September, God willing. Um, so we're putting the finishing touches on that. We're preparing for the book tour and we're revving up for the press for that. So I'm super excited. And people can find you on Essence? Um, they can find me on my blog, abellinbrooklyn.com, and they can follow me on Twitter and uh, Instagram at abellinbk. All right. Thank you so much and congratulations. Super welcome. Thank you. Angelique, your Cafe Mocha Espresso is brought to you by Gentle Treatment Hair Care. Remember Astro, the young rapper who almost won X Factor? Well, this weekend is his acting debut in Earth to Echo. Music is still my main thing. Yeah, like I love them both equally. I have like uh, one more thing to shoot right now and then I'm going to just take a break because it's a lot of work. Like it's fun to actually shoot and be on set. With the promotional tours and stuff, like you really got to be prepared for that. This weekend is the 20th anniversary Essence Festival presented by Coca Cola featuring Mary J. Blige. Here she is talking about her husband. He came at the right time and he came when I was ready to change. You know, there's not a lot of men that, you know, they just all want to yell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wasn't. And they all do. <laughs> But she kind of came with like a kind of like a pastor theme, you know, like I have some information for you. It's going to hurt, but it's going to help. No one's never approached me like that. And was that Deion Sanders co-hosting Entertainment Tonight naked? What about hosting naked? Yeah, that would never work, right, Nancy? Mm-hmm. And besides, it would seem like a desperate move to get attention, especially if Roxy took a selfie and posted it all over E.T.'s social yeah, media and platform. we would just hope it went viral. Is it, is it cold in here or is, is it just me? I'd love to see Deion Sanders on entertainment tonight. I'm Angelique with your Cafe Mocha Espresso, brought to you by Gentle Treatment. What a grown woman knows. This, this, this is Cafe Mocha. Cafe Mocha. Cafe Mocha.
I'm Angelique wrapping up the show with the light mix starring our very own MC Light. Again, we want to thank all the sponsors who made Cafe Mocha salute her awards possible. Our friends at Prudential, AARP, and Kimberly Hairston and her team at Gentle Treatment Hair Care. Have a great 4th of July weekend. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else at Cafe Mocha Radio. Cafe Mocha is a production of Miles Ahead Broadcasting in association with Cumulus Media Networks. Executive producer Sheila Eldridge, writer and producer Angelique Perrin. For comments and more information, visit CafeMochaRadio.com.